live from Newegg Studios in Southern California. This is Newegg Now. I'm Trisha Hirschberger. I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, and we're here every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, our brains bursting <laughs> with hardware and gaming news and facts. <laughs> Uh, we're eager to share with all of you fine folks out in the audience today. Today, we're going to be talking about the hardware professionals use to develop the games you love. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll share some big news about how you can uh, save money on a total PC components package from Newegg. And we'll end the show going hands-on with some Sonic Mania Plus. Woo! Uh, and of course, the best part of Newegg Now each week is the special deals that you will only find on Newegg.com slash Newegg Now. These deals just went live a few minutes ago and they'll mm -hmm. only be around until the end of the day today or while supplies last, whichever comes first. That's right. While supplies last, mm -hmm. I've been burned on that before. So if you aren't already looking at that Newegg Now page, you'll want to go there now because mm -hmm. we have a couple of big deals on graphics cards. <laughs> and graphics cards, time and again on our show, sell out super fast. Uh, so let's talk about those right now. While while they are still hopefully in stock. Okay, so first up, we have an EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 FTW2 GPU. It has RGB LED lighting and EVGA's ICX cooling technology. Now, we've had Jacob from EVGA on our yeah. show before it's talking fun. about ICX and how special it is. It's, good dude. it's got nine thermal sensors, a synchronous fan control, full sensor monitoring, and manual fan control with EVGA's Precision XOC software. It's great for overclocking. It's a fantastic card. And today only with that promo code on the Newegg Now page, you can pick one up for just $499, which is $100 less than the normal price. Not too shabby. Yeah. And uh, maybe you need even more power than a GTX 1080 offers. Okay. Maybe you're tuning into our show this week with your fingers crossed, hoping that maybe, just maybe, we'll have a special price on the big dog of the GPU world the 1080 Ti. Ah. Well, and and I'm pausing for dramatic effect here. I can tell. Because by the time I'm done with the sentence, they could be sold out. We do. Yes, we do. Woo! Absolutely. Today only, while supplies last, you can get a Zotac GeForce GTX 1080 Ti Amp Edition GPU mm -hmm. for $60 off the normal price when you use the Newegg Now promo code. This is one of the most powerful graphics cards money can buy. Uh, it's NVIDIA's flagship GP GPU, offers VR and traditional gaming performance that's almost impossible to beat. And as I speak right now, people are buying it using that Newegg Now yeah. promo code. If you want to be one of those lucky upgraders, get to Newegg.com slash Newegg Now before our stock runs out. All right, so that is Newegg Now for you. Uh, just a few <laughs> minutes into the show, and we're already saving you hundreds on graphics cards. We're cool. Whether you want a 1080 or a 1080 yeah, Ti, right now is a fantastic time to score a new GPU. And there are a lot more deals on that Newegg Now page for you mm -hmm. to check out. Uh, tons of high-end hardware and fully built systems at great prices. We'll be highlighting more of those throughout today's show. We've got some other things to talk about, though. Video games! <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe you've heard of them. <laughs> As it oh. turns out, they are big business these days. Now, of course, if you're watching this show, you probably already knew that video games are a big deal. But you might not know that gaming is now officially the most profitable form of Love entertainment it. overall, according to industry stats recently reported by Reuters. Um, in 2017, gaming brought in a whopping $116 billion Ooh. in revenue. That's up, over, that's up 10%, I believe, over the year before. Mm -hmm. um, and that put gaming ahead of the next highest category, television, which was down 8% to come in at $105 billion. Yeah, it, there, and there are a few more interesting facts in that report that are worth highlighting. Mm -hmm. So an individual game, Grand Theft Auto V, sold more than 90 million units and grossed more than $6 billion. Yeah. Which makes it the most profitable entertainment release, single solitary product of all time in any medium. That's crazy. That's that's nuts. <laughs> Cuz I mean, we get into that like we get into that like first weekend sales. Yes. Did it gross a billion dollars in the first two days? Right, sure. But we, there is still like an extended audience or an mm -hmm. extended, you know, box office, I should say, as games sure, move yeah. to different platforms and games evolve over time. Uh, so, I mean, another reason for games, uh, gaming's continued growth, the mm -hmm. expansion of the Chinese market, mm -hmm. uh, sales climbing about 14% year over year. <laughs> That's going to be huge, uh, a huge factor in gaming revenue going forward. Um, so, like, what do we think about these numbers? Gaming is bigger than TV, movies, and digital music. Is that a surprise to you? I, you know, I really don't think it is. I, you know, we, we were talking about this because we're, we're playing an old school game. Both yeah. of us come from old school gaming yes. backgrounds. The argument has always been, we've always been at the forefront of this argument that your entertainment dollar stretches better on a game. Like the, the bang for buck that you get out of trying to like you and Nate and Logan 
packing up or, or you know hiring a babysitter so you and Nate can go and catch a movie buying a snack right spending two hours watching an awesome piece of entertainment oh, it's, yeah it's way too expensive but I mean you compare that to the entertainment dollar that you get on a good steam sale <laughs> oh man I spend way too many dollars on a steam sale um, but yeah I, you're you're absolutely right if you're gonna look at the bang for your buck on like an hourly basis right I'm gonna get way more bang for my buck on something like a Final Fantasy 15 that I'm gonna dump, you know, 60 hours I, into. I'm still old enough and cranky enough and bitter enough to say I'm gonna get way, way, way more bang for my buck rebuying Contra on like another Nintendo okay. platform for how much fun I'm gonna have playing that game. That's true, and games with crazy replayability yeah. and procedural generation. Yeah, I mean that that's definitely a great point to bring up about it. Also. The whole other aspect of money that the gaming industry brings in when it comes to content creation. So, oh, yeah. with gaming on Twitch and YouTube, even when people aren't actively playing games, they're still usually enjoying gaming in some form if they're watching uh, a content creator. And that is all money in the gaming industry oh, totally. in addition to just sales. Uh, and, and look at that. I mean, as we look at that shift in culture, I mean, because I never would have predicted the rise of Twitch and game streaming. Mm -hmm. Like, even a couple of years ago. Well, you know, a game video is like a tutorial or how do I get through this? Completely missed mm -hmm. the boat on personality-driven gaming content. Oh man, highlight cuts have been the thing for a while. Right, I, you, uh, I, whoosh. Um, <laughs> but then look at like the decline in, in, in eyeballs on TV. That is peripheral content, which yes. is taking people away from other mediums and yes. other platforms. And it's still gaming related. It's still gaming adjacent. It's still personality driven. It's still hosted. Well, and arguably one of the biggest earners is mobile gaming. Oh, totally. Through, I mean, that's why people keep doing microtransactions and loot boxes because they bring in so many, so much stupid amounts of money. Yeah. Um, and, and now gaming on a Switch, making gaming something that people can do all the time. So it's not just entertainment you access at home. When you get home from school or home from work, you can do it on the bus. You can do it on the subway. You can, you know, like, you can enjoy gaming all the time. So then another question I'll bring up is okay. what, what is it about video games? Why do you think that they are succeeding while other forms of entertainment right now may be struggling? Oh, well, I'm not qualified to talk about the psychology of gaming. <laughs> um, I, you know, two semesters of uh, clinical psych <laughs> in, in college, so uh, let, me, let me give you yeah. my expert opinion here. Yes. Um, well, first of all, I mean, I, I think a lot of people can agree on, on the, the sort of reward aspect, you know, that you invest time into this platform and gaming gives you a better hit at accomplishing something. You are struggling, struggling, struggling. You break through. You figure out how to figure out this like uh, game mechanic or this puzzle or this this aspect of the shooter that you're playing, mm -hmm. and and that that is a very satisfying experience because it's so personal. It's like in your head. It's in your brain. I would agree with you. It's that immersive nature of gaming that you're not just experiencing it through someone else's eyes. You are actually being transported into them and helping to solve and overcome the yeah. obstacles, which is very cool. I, I think that's a major component of it. But mm -hmm. then also. Yeah, it, it got its rise in things like arcades, so there was immediately a social aspect. Hmm. From the earliest days of Twitch reaction gaming of competition, who mm -hmm. can rack up the highest, uh, the highest scores, who can get to kill screens in old yes. school like uh, uh, cabinets. Um, and then that's just evolved over time too. We have always had a sharing, cooperative, collaborative, and competitive piece built into gaming from the very beginnings, from the earliest origins of pinball machines. Yeah. Um, that, that's been something that you can build and build and build on. And sometimes that feels like it's getting weaponized. Like you were mentioning other things too, player mechanics, loot yeah. boxes, things like that. Sometimes that can work against us, but on the whole, it is a much more active and interactive form of entertainment than a passive consumption. I'm gonna sit here and really enjoy this movie. I still sit and really enjoy right. the odd movie, but it doesn't seem to have the same drive or the same energy to it when I'm really getting into a good game. Yeah, or I mean, or a book, or exactly. you, you know, listening to music. And and everyone obviously has their thing. Not everyone is a diehard video game uh, person. However, the money speaks, and oh, totally. that's that's what's happening right now. So it's a fascinating trend to check out. Well, and did you see the news that Google is actually going to be taking gaming more seriously? Oh, I sure did. Holy and we'll God. have to talk about that, that on a different episode of New Egg now because episode. I could fill the rest of this hour talking about Project I don't, even, I don't even have notes on the mm -hmm. screen. I'm, I'm getting the note. We should probably move on to the actual <laughs> topics that we're going to be talking about. But we could we could tack. We should, At lunch today, we'll talk all about it. We're going to chat yeah. about that because that was kind of a big deal. So mm -hmm. in conclusion, don't let anybody tell you that you can't make 
uh, make, can't, you can't make money playing video games. Yes. Even if you don't become an esports pro, it's a huge industry mm -hmm. that's only getting bigger, more profitable. We've had people on the show to talk about gaming as an educational resource and yes. as an infrastructure. So yes. really exciting times. Gaming is big business. So if we've convinced you to get serious about developing your own <laughs> games, mayhaps, then you're going to need the right hardware for the job. So True stay story. right where you are because we'll be back talking about the tech that pros use to make games in just a second. the show first of all thank you second of all you'll know that we'll be talking a lot about playing games around here but we don't talk as much about the process of actually creating games yeah. so game development can be absolutely fascinating but it doesn't get as much attention usually as the finished product no. I think our show is just a small example of a wider journalistic <laughs> trend where everyone talks about the games but not so much the development. So today we're going to pull back the curtain a little bit and take a look at some of the hardware that developers use to create our favorite digital masterpieces. And so when people think about professional game development systems, they often imagine giant, I do, imagine giant PC towers with hardcore cooling solutions, Titan cards and SLI configurations. If a, re if a game requires a 1080 or a 1080 Ti to mm -hmm. run at max settings, it probably requires two or three of those cards in order to create the thing. Uh, well, the good news is for those of you on laptops or who want to get into game design, maybe you're working on a budget, uh, that isn't always the case. You know it's not. Uh, to start, it really all depends on what kind of games that you're trying to make. If you're yeah. making something that's pretty visually simple, like a sprite-based RPG using the RPG Maker software then you, that you can get on Steam, for example, that will run fine on lower-end system hardware. Mm -hmm. Two-dimensional games can be made on a laptop in theory as mm -hmm. long as you have some sort of integrated graphics solution. Oh, yeah. Now, as long as you can compile and test code, you'll probably be all right. Of course, a dedicated GPU, even if it's one of the less powerful models, like a GTX 1050 or 1050 Ti, will certainly make for a more pleasant development experience, even right. if it isn't technically required. Oh, yeah. So the main thing you're going to want to pay attention to it, to start, especially at that level, is the mm -hmm. CPU. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of the bottlenecking occurs in development. And that's what's going to be doing most of the heavy lifting. So you'll probably want at least an Intel Core i5, an AMD Ryzen 5 1600, or something comparable with at least more than one core. So this is Newegg now. So of <laughs> course we have a great deal for you on a perfect game development CPU, <laughs> the AMD Ryzen 5 2600 for $30 off right now. Right. This is a six core 12 thread processor based on AMD's Zen Plus architecture. It, has, uh, it also has a perfect five egg user review rating on Newegg.com. So you know special. that it's good. Everybody here is very critical, so that's important. <laughs> Head over to the Newegg Now page to get the AMD Ryzen 5 2600 600 for that special price before time runs out. Now, uh, CPU's great. You got to get memory for your system, though. And as far as mm -hmm. RAM goes, mm -hmm. 8 gig, 16 gig, probably fine for making simple games. You may only need 16 gigabytes of RAM, but having more RAM is always more better. So <laughs> especially if you're someone who's running a ton of programs at the same time, which you can easily end up doing with more complex game development. I have to imagine, I mean, because you know, when you're putting videos together too, I'm sure you're like me, where it's like, well, I've got to have a photo editor up and I've got to oh, have yeah. titles this and oh, I've got yeah. to have this. I, I am also scrubbing my audio. Maybe there's a problem that I didn't notice. So I, I might have, and that's just for making a YouTube video. Right. Not putting together an entire Not a full game. game. Yeah. So just for you multitaskers out there, we've got 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RAM for you, mm -hmm. discounted $40 off. This is DDR4 RAM with pure aluminum heat spreaders to keep uh, to keep cool and look cool at the same time. And you can check it out on newegg.com slash newegg now. 
Now, if you're doing any kind of game design or anything serious, really, you're going to want an SSD. This will dramatically help with loading times and compilation, regardless of what kind of game that you're building. And while an SSD is important for designing games, you also need plenty of storage for backing up your files, and solid state drives can get expensive in the very large sizes yeah. that you may want. So. I don't know, have you ever lost progress while playing a game because you forgot how to save? Now, now take a moment <laughs> to think about how mad you would be if you lost progress in a game you were actually making. Oh, so I mean, yeah. I, again, because neither of us are game developers, but no. that experience is the most soul-gutting. So I was on a previous, a previous version of, of Vegas. So yes. I, I do a lot of my just quick, random, cutty, punchy videos on Vegas. It used okay. to be Sony Vegas. And the last generation, not the current one, but the last generation would have this like, I'm just gonna lock up yeah. kind of moment. Ugh. And the autosave wouldn't get like, it, would, it, it, would, it wouldn't keep up with you very well. Yes. And it, there was one time, Lex was uh, almost one, I'm working on this video, it's like three in the morning, she's been crying all night, and I'm just sitting there rocking a crying toddler when it locks, mm -hmm. and I realize like, I haven't saved in oh, an hour. No. And, and it was like, I, I quit life. I, I'm, I'm done. I'm over. Giant yeah. eject button. Nope. I'm done. Yeah, I'm going to have to come back with this in the morning. When that with work, it's crazy. I recently had it happen to me uh, with a game specifically on, on a stream. I was Twitch streaming near Automata. I've been streaming that a lot uh, for the past, I would say, month and a half probably. And uh, there's a lot of boss battles in that game where you have quite a bit of time between save points. <laughs> and Logan was upset and needed me, and I was not anywhere near a save point. So I ended my stream, and I actually <laughs> told everyone in my stream, give me an hour, and I will come back, and I'm just going to old school leave it on pause. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it on nice. and leave it on pause because I do not want to have to go back and redo the last hour and a half of this like boss battle epic that, scene. That was Jurassic Park on the Super Nintendo, mm -hmm. not the Sega Genesis, because the Super Nintendo version of Jurassic Park was a top-down player game like Zelda yeah. with no save. And so, I remember that in the old school uh, days of having to turn off the TV but leave the power, the power button, button on, on and just tell mom that to, you like, turned it off. Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> so imagine trying to play Zelda with no saving. It's like, who, who designed, whoever was responsible, and, and someone yeah. please point me in the direction. I'd love to still write a cranky email to someone that was on the development team for the Super Nintendo version <laughs> of Jurassic Park. Uh, send that courtesy of Juan Bagnell at Newegg. All right, we could go down the nostalgia hole of how old games saved for hours. <laughs> but uh, since we're talking about saving, let's bring it back. Right. If you're looking for some large backup drives, which then we have are. you covered. Yeah. So check out the Seagate Backup Plus Hub on the Newegg Now page, which will give you four terabytes of external memory, plenty for whatever game you're working on, available now for $10 off. Yeah. So uh, making simple 2D games, not as hardware intensive as you might think. Mm -mm. But what if you're trying to go big with the full 3Ds in engines like Unity or Unreal? That's where things get a little more hardware intensive as you would probably expect. But even so, if you have a solid gaming rig, you should be just fine unless you're doing super high-end VR development or something really crazy. But for 3D game development, you're definitely going to need a dedicated GPU, yeah. like a 1080 or a 1080 Ti, or a Vega card from AMD. Probably. You'll want to be able to easily render all the fanciest lighting effects for testing, and you'll need a powerful graphics card to do that. Integrated graphics probably aren't going to cut it. No, definitely yeah. not. And, uh, you know, just a reminder, we, we did have the GTX 1080 from EVGA and mm -hmm. the 1080 Ti from Zotac. Both available. Mentioned earlier in the show. Big discounts right now on the mm -hmm. new Now page. Uh, just what you might need to get your system ready for 3D graphics design. Just a callback to mm -hmm. what we talked about earlier. And as far as yeah. CPUs go, uh, <laughs> you're not going to want to go with anything less than an i5 for serious game development, and right. an i7 is probably a better bet. Yeah. There are a lot of numbers to crunch, and having a good GPU and CPU will only make things faster and smoother for you. Oh, yeah. And, and so now we're stepping up. So we were talking about RAM for mm -hmm. sort of like simpler sprite-based games. Well, the conversation kind of expands on that too. Mm -hmm. You'll want no less than 16 gigs of memory. You'll absolutely want an SSD, either SATA or NVMe. Mm -hmm. we've, we've had uh, episodes on the past. Um, sorry, I'm going off script here for just a second. Okay. Uh, like uh, Intel. An yes. Optane memory solution might also mm. be a good fit for you too, because we're talking about that extra horsepower, that extra speed, caching files to yes. make sure that your system can uh, access them appropriately. And if you want to have rendering programs and image manipulation software like Photoshop open in addition to your engine, 
that extra RAM is really going to come in handy. So we've already talked about that Corsair, Corsair deal on the Newegg Now page, uh, but we have even more even RAM more. for you guys. You can pick up four <laughs> eight gigabyte sticks of G Skill Trident Z RGB RAM for thirty dollars off right now. And if you saw our show last week when we went through a bunch of build photos sent in by the Newegg audience, you'll remember that we saw the Trident Z RAM oh, in a lot. bunch of the builds. It's yeah. a super high quality, high performance, and it's got bright, customizable RGB lights. What's not to like? Uh, nothing's not to like. Right. Yeah, and I, I, I'm pretty sure those RGBs make your game development go faster. Oh, is that how it yeah, works? it's like speed holes yes. on a car. Definitely. So uh, regardless of what kind of game you're making, whether VR, mm -hmm. traditional, if you're working with Game Maker, something like the Frostbite engine, you'll need a good monitor. Probably two of them, in fact. You'll want plenty of screen real estate because you'll be working with multiple programs and windows, and you can never have too much space. I'm on yeah. dual. Are you? You're, you're on one big monitor right now, right? Uh, you went ultra wide. I, I have. I, I'm the worst. I have ultra wide, plus a second monitor oh, okay. that's 16 by nine, plus another one mounted above. So I, I'm. It's overkill. So I went. I went now dual 4K and a TV. Okay. So I can throw stuff out to a TV and and like. A really old busted TV. That's all right. Because that kind of helps me see. It's like the audio mix. Like, does it sound good yes. on the worst band? Yes, and I actually, I think we're talking about that in a little bit in the show as well. Yeah. How you know you have to consider even if you have a super high end rig and it runs your game beautifully. Yes. What about everybody else? We'll get to that. Yes. So you you might not need a super <laughs> high resolution monitor though if you're going to be testing your game. 4K environment. You want to have that resolution available to play with, and then also options for things like having lots of tools open all at the same time. Yes, yeah. okay, so now let's talk about your potential player's build, like we were yeah. kind of leading into a little bit earlier. So building and testing a game with a 4K monitor, an i9, and two 1080s is all well and good, but the awesome. vast majority of people who will be playing your game will not have access to that kind of tech. So keep in mind that most people will be using much simpler systems, and your game needs to be able to run on those systems as well. Yes, and get, that's kind of what I was getting. Yeah, yeah I was just a, a slide ahead in our script there. But yeah, that used to be the thing in, in audio engineering. Yeah. You would take the final mix and then play it on the crappiest car stereo it's of smart. the band members, and if it sounded good there, it probably is going to sound good on a really high-end system too. Mm -hmm. So we've covered some of the hardware you're going to need to get into game design and what developers use. I mean, they're not using things that different from the off-the-shelf parts that you can also get yourself if you want to get into this. But if you're starting from scratch, you might still be a little unclear. And we have a huge selection of fantastic desktops and laptops that will work perfectly for game designers so you can start programming right out of the box. Okay, so let's start off with these pre-built deals with this great desktop from CyberPower PC. This machine has a GTX 1060, an 8th Gen 8400 CPU, and plenty of storage, discounted now for $50 off. Nice. And you can also pick up the ABS Versa, which has an i7-8700, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and a GTX 1060. And this desktop is on sale on Newegg now for $50 off. And if you want to keep it mobile, we've got some really interesting options in the laptop space. Let's start with the ultimate gaming slash gaming development laptop, the MSI Titan. Yep. We've had this monstrous laptop on the show before. It's the, the most difficult selfie I've ever taken. With that huge, yeah. I was like pizza plattering it. And like, I, was, yes. I was not a waiter, so I never developed this, and I'm trying to hold <laughs> the Titan and take the selfie at the same it yep. was It was not my best look. So this is the MSI GT75 Titan, an 8th Gen 8750H uh, Intel CPU, mm -hmm. eight, uh, an 8 gigabyte GTX 1080, a crazy $300 off, and a $100 mail-in rebate. If you're looking for a top-of-the-line gaming laptop, this is practically like the, the, the last word in mobile workstation so nice. here. Look no further. Yeah. It's more than capable for game development, even if you're working in highly demanding spaces like VR. Or maybe you're looking for a laptop that's a little bit smaller yeah. and a little bit more stylish. We've talked about the MSI Stealth Fin, and we have some great footage of this beautiful laptop in action. So let's take a look at that now. MSI has been putting out flashy gaming laptops for a long time now, but they've never pulled up anything quite like this. The MSI GS65 Stealth Thin 8RE is all about the marriage of good looks and high-end performance. 
This isn't a giant RGB machine, but a classy looking laptop that disguises surprising power inside a fancy chassis. The version we reviewed here has a GTX 1060 and an i7 8th gen Intel CPU, but you can adjust the specs to fit your price point. The first thing you'll probably notice is how the GS65 stealth thin bucks traditional gaming design and puts emphasis on a luxury aesthetic. The black sandblasted aluminum alloy is accented with subtle gold throughout, on the trackpad, the buttons, the gilded MSI logo on the back, and the gold accents on the vents. It's a different approach than the traditional red, black, and white MSI has been pushing for a while now, and it's proof they're going after a different demographic with this one. The GS65 Stealth Thin isn't just pretty, it's also surprisingly small given how much power it's packing. At 4.1 pounds and 0.7 inches thick, it's one of the thinnest and lightest Max-Q gaming laptops around. So something this thin must have skimped on connectivity options, right? Not really. We're looking at Thunderbolt 3, Mini DisplayPort, HDMI, 3 USB 3.1 Type-A ports, audio jacks, and even a gigabit Ethernet, which is surprising in something this small. Kudos to MSI for pulling out all the stops when it comes to connectivity. So it's thin and pretty, what about what's inside? Our model came with an Intel Core i7-8750H CPU, a Max-Q cooled GTX 1060 with 6GB of VRAM, a 256GB NVMe SSD, and 16GB of RAM. This is pretty high-end stuff, but if you prefer, you can get it even more decked out with a 1070 and more storage and RAM. As far as thermals go, MSI's 5 heat pipes in conjunction with the Max-Q GPU design keep things relatively cool. It's gonna get a little hot and loud if you're pushing the graphics card hard, there's no getting around that in something this thin, but the thermal performance was very much on par with the competition in our tests. So how about battery? The MSI Stealth Thin impresses on this front as well. Obviously your mileage is going to vary if you're running the GPU under full load, but with light use, we were able to get about 5 hours, which is pretty impressive. MSI has partnered up with SteelSeries once again to bring out a high performance deck for typing. The keys aren't mechanical, but the spacing is laid out nicely and the 77 gram force actuation makes typing or gaming a breeze. The individual RGB is fully customizable for a variety of fancy patterns. Pair that with a 15.6 inch 1920x1080 display with a remarkably thin bezel and a 144Hz refresh rate, and you're looking at a seriously high-end gaming package. The MSI GS65 Stealth Thin 8RE is an all-around impressive entry into MSI's varied gaming lineup. Its next-level design paired with connectivity features galore, a high-end display, and modifiable specs make this a beautiful powerhouse. It's an interesting new direction for MSI, and we're hoping they continue with this luxury line in addition to their more traditional gaming machines. because we had one in studio. and It was beautiful. Yeah, it's a really clean machine. So the version we have on sale right now has a GTX 1070 mm -hmm. and an 8750H Intel CPU uh, with uh, 32 gigs, uh, this is 32 gigs of storage. Might wanna look that up. Sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm actually troubleshooting our script right now, which I should, have, I should have taken a look at before. 32 GB of something for you, probably mm. not the full hard drive size. Uh, but we're talking good looks, bang for buck, discounted right now for $200 off. Uh, the, the retail price, which is, a, which is a great look for MSI. Yes. Now, there are a lot of system and component deals up and down that Newegg.com slash Newegg Now page, but one that you might want to take a look at, and actually, you know what, before we move on to this next section, I see oh, 32 yeah. gigs of memory. Yes, 32 gigs of RAM. Yes. Real nice for a laptop. Yeah, Real nice. A long time we were stuck at 16. Thank you, uh, New Egg Ninjas, for the clarification there. Yes. Uh, appreciate it. Thank so. you so much. Um, so now let's kind of change <laughs> change pace a little bit and take a special look at the PC Build Kit banner on the New Egg Now page. Yeah. So I think you guys are going to check that out. And if you don't you already know, the PC Build Kits are one of the newest ways that New Egg is making it easy to get started with PC building. Awesome. On the PC Build Kit page on Newegg.com, you'll make a few simple selections. What kind of case do you want? Are you going with Intel or AMD? And then you'll pick from one of three tiers offering varying levels of power and performance. So one of the toughest parts of figuring out a new PC build is 
making sure all of your components are compatible. Sure is. And with the PC build kits on Newegg, that problem is already solved for you. Yes. So you'll get the components shipped to you, and the folks at Newegg will have already made sure that they will all work together to give you exactly what you're looking for. All you need to do is plug it all together. Yes, so if you're in the market for a new system and do want to build it yourself, then visit Newegg.com slash Newegg now and check out that PC build kit for yourself. You'll get a set of quality, compatible components for a fantastic price. And the best part, if you order one of these kits right now for a limited time, you'll get an extra bonus gift card. Hey, now, these hey. kits always come with a Newegg gift card included to help you pick up games or extra goodies for your system. Good. But as a part of Newegg now, these gift card values are doubled and even go as high as $400. Nice. So, whether you want to build a new system for gaming, <laughs> streaming, uh, to kickstart your career in game development, be wacky video personality type people, <laughs> You know, uh, do that. A, a boy can dream. So the Newegg PC Build Kit is a great way to do that. Check out the banner on newegg.com slash newegg now and make your choice today. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the hardware used to make games today. So what better way to close things out than to actually play a brand new game? We've got to go fast. Uh, so we will be right back with Sonic Media Plus. Gotta go fast. Rated E for everyone. history with Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay, so we were a mostly Nintendo household. Yeah. So Nintendo, uh, SNES, uh, N64. So my Sonic adventures were always at other friends' houses. I was so. in a similar boat. I've told yeah. this story on the show before, but I got the original Nintendo, and then my parents were like, video games are no good. No more. So I moved to PC gaming, and that's actually how I got into upgrading my own PC at a very young age. So I never had a Sega in my house either, yeah. but I did get to play quite a bit of it at other friends' houses. Um, so this hits the nostalgia button real hard for me. Yeah, so even, even for not having been like a diehard Genesis player, does it somehow feel a little off not having the Half it's Moon Sega controller when you're so going back? So weird. It feels kind of not... It's Complete. This is so weird to be holding a PlayStation controller and checking out this game. <laughs> so um, jumping into Sonic. So, guys, if you are a Sonic fan, then you already know about Sonic Mania, which oh, yeah. came out last year. Now, Sonic Mania was a return of the classic 90s Sonic style released by Sega, but actually made by fan game developers. Mm -hmm. It featured remixes of classic Sonic levels and gameplay, and it was a big hit. So some people, including Newegg's GameCrate.com, <laughs> called it the best Sonic game since 1994's and Knuckles. High praise so yeah. we have sonic mania plus which comes out next week we on july 17th early. i know it's like we get to play it yeah right it comes here. out july 17th so it's an expansion for sonic mania that adds new content to the game including two new characters mighty the mm -hmm. armadillo and ray the flying squirrel with new abilities mm -hmm. it also adds encore mode a, a kind of new game plus that adds a variety of tweaks to the game story mode, changes up how lives and bonus stages work, and gives you one more reason to dive back into hours of retro Sonic 
goodness. Now, if you already own Sonic Mania, you can get the Plus content digitally for only four dollars and ninety nine cents. Nice. But you might be tempted to order the physical version for PS4, Xbox One, or Nintendo Switch because it comes with some pretty fun bonuses. <laughs> it even has a book. Huh? So yeah, we have the PS4 version. That's what we've been displaying right here. You can order it from Newegg.com. Uh, just search the site for Sonic Mania Plus, and you can get this for twenty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. It includes a physical disc, a collectible art book loaded with concept art and storyboards. Oh, you, you didn't get to see um, that. I know, right? And a reversible game cover so you can make your game box look like a Sega Genesis game. Hold it up. Ah, look at this. Yeah. And, and actually, the, the so our new egg ninja Leo was pointing it out too. Like even all of the, the the bubbles and text and stuff on the back reads like an old school card. It like, sure does. Push blast processing to the next level with high definition graphics. It's straight out of the '90s, and it makes me so happy. Dude, I it love it so much. Makes me so happy. All right, enough talking about the game. Yes. It's time to play. Yeah, let's do this. Okay. Okay, great. So um, we're gonna play off with the the new characters from the expansion. Totally. Okay. I, I'll be mighty. Okay. I, I will be uh, Ray the Flying Squirrel. Okay, great. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead. I think. Are you driving? I, I don't know that. Let's see. All right. Let's see. Oh, PlayStation. Is that you? Get back in. Okay, so I'm gonna do that, then that. Yep. Okay, so I now think we're I'm, good. So, so we're gonna do the competition. competition. Okay. Okay. So I, 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 I need some training wheels. Uh, I think I'm gonna say let's start off with just like the first level of classic. Classic Sonic, Sonic and goodness. then maybe show off some new stuff. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, great. Just kind of get my sea legs. So we there. are good to go. I know I'm still learning uh, Mighty's new moves, and I, as I'm sure you are with Ray. <laughs> I, I was like. Um, Nick was was talking up like, oh yeah, he can totally glide. You're not doing it right. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I felt I felt terrible. Like uh, Nick has had substantially more hands-on time with this game than we have. Oh, and I'm already. So I was asking in this con in this damn it in this competitive <laughs> mode. Uh, the point is to speed run it faster than your opponent. Well, right? I was trying to look like because it's, it's also we're supposed to be doing like a round of three, right? So it's kind of like fighting <laughs> game rules. Oh, I didn't get enough speed. Oh, I cleared it. Um, so I think oh, I cleared it. I think there's probably some benefit for, uh, you know, for getting all the points. So, so like, let's say we both got really close in terms of time. Okay. Oh, I almost killed myself right there. Then, then oh, points and then might I be an issue. And, then, yeah, then I think the rings are going to matter. Um, well, yeah. Woo, let's do oh, it! And I just went and almost died again. So Mighty can oh, do this dang. really cool, like, jump and smash down if I need to destroy anything. And that's cool. Mighty is also, I from what I hear, a little bit, <laughs> as I die, a little bit harder to kill. He's a little bit tougher. So. Give me that. I haven't found a good feel for, uh, and, and died again. Dying again. Um, I haven't found a good feel for Ray's flying squirrel thing. Really? Yeah. Oof. Did you so, clear it already? Of course you did. Well, yeah, I mean, this is just the first level. I, like. <laughs> As I die again. <laughs> cool, cool. So, so, yeah, I'm trying to get a feel for it. I, I think we're going to go to a much more advanced level where we're both probably going to be laughably terrible and people are going to make fun of us rightfully. Rightfully, uh, yes. I'm going to try and see if I can pull off raise like a uh, horizontal hover glide awesome thing um try going to the left i think you might find a really yeah and then there you go got it and oh i think i and just some death you. and i can't get back up oh i can so this is also one of the things i don't know how it's showing up on the stream but doing the split screen our tv is cutting off just the tiniest little edge which uh we, we can't quite see uh Okay, so let's play, let's see, what are some of the new, new craziness? I the, like, I kind of like that desert uh, vaporwave motif. Let's do it. So let's check this out. Um, Mirage. And, and I will probably down. not be as dominant in this one now. I don't know why I did that. I'm That's all right. St stuck on a rock. Okay, let's get this going. Go, mighty, go. This. We also, I also want to show off after we're done running through this one. What did I die on? I don't even know. Is that, wh who is that? Oh, that's a bad guy? I thought that was you. <laughs> oh. Now it, that's oh. you. Okay. Yeah, that was me behind you, but. Got it. I, I'm still trying to get the feel for oh, how this is his. Funny. I can push that. That's cool. There's ice cream. I'll take it. 
So how do you like a giant that? pinball machine? Oh, that's neato. Get it. So how does his glide work though? You're still trying to figure that out. Yeah, I'm still trying the operative word. All right. There we go. Ooh, I'm running on water. That's fun. Okay, well, that kind of did it. Huzzah! Woo! That's probably not what I wanted to do there, but there we go. All right. I like that we're just in a giant pinball machine in this level. That's really fun. Well, it does definitely. I mean, like, they've done an amazing job of getting back to, like, what made Sonic so hyperkinetic and frenetic and... Every good um, Sonic level should kind of feel like you're just getting bounced around. I'm not really sure where I'm supposed to go here. Hopefully this is it. Maybe ah, over dang here. it. Okay. I'm gonna Get say it. that's what it is. Ah, oh, missed it again. Oh, this bad guy that looks like me again! <laughs> <laughs> All right. No! Uh. Snap. <laughs> I was here already? That just brought, oh, I, I thought that was part of the environment. Turns out it's a bad guy. No, I don't want to. Not into it. People are so disappointed in me right now. I can already people, I, Well, I kind of live my video game life online knowing that people are disappointed in me. All Ooh, right. look at this. is awesome. Which oh, way do I go? I want the giant that way! gun thing. That was very cool. Oh, and that's All a bad right. guy, apparently. Oh, crud, monkey. I'm trying real hard to keep it clean, folks. <laughs> you guys you guys don't understand the her <laughs> Herculean effort in a good platformer and keeping this stream PG. I love platformers, but I would say they're probably my ragiest streams are when I'm streaming platforming games. Yeah, you smoked me on this one. I just made it to the gun. That's all right. I was trying to pull off his, uh, like, this new, like... The flying thing. Yeah, I can't figure out what the... Oh, that kind of did Did you just it. do it? Sort of. Now that I can actually focus on your half of the screen, I want to see it. Yay! I made it to the goal backwards. Huzzah! Yeah, okay, so I, I burned way too much time actually trying to, uh, the items to score 400. Okay, so let's, let, okay. Now, Nick, do you want us to do a different mode or keep going here? One more, one more okay. here. We're going to finish our last round here. Well, we need a tiebreaker. We're tied now, yeah. Yeah, we need a tiebreaker. So maybe this uh, HCZ2, let's does that do sound it. good? I love I'm trying it. to pick things neither of us would know. Hydro City Zone. Okay. Three, two, one, go! Now I'm actually gonna go. Try. Oh. Oh, that was weird. Whoa. Okay, so we need to get stuck on that thing. Hey, hand. Bounce. And. Oh, that's fun. Oh, I see what's happening. What I've always loved about Sonic level design, though, is like, oh, no, dang it. Go, 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 go. Let me try that again. There you are. Oh. oh, I needed to go up there. That probably. Come on, yeah. Just enough. Oh, that didn't work at all. Oh, Darn it. Go, 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 go. Can oh. That Died on those Can I again. get this guy? Oh no, I thought I smooshed him. Oh man, swimming? Ugh. Oh! Yeah, there's some scary stuff going on in this water. Oh, now I can like glide when I'm underwater. No that, problems underwater. That doesn't, that doesn't help me at all. No? Okay, I need to go back here and hit something, obviously. Swirl. Oh, I got a bubble. What's the bubble do? Does that let me swim maybe? Oh, oh, this is a no. fun, do you, you make it to those? Spires. Oh, bubbles to breathe, apparently. Good, well, because I'm stuck under here. Is, there's no bouncy Ooh. thing, really? What's my chocolate? Oh, that's scary. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, I need to spend way more time on this. Whee! Oh, dang it. Dude, you are kicking my butt. I don't know level. that I am. I believe that you are. Oh man, check that out. So I think I, oh, that, that's what I missed, okay. Ugh. Oh! Mm -hmm. Ooh, Snap. No death, please, not today. Not okay, let's today! Get... This is the, the, the other thing too, like I've always loved about oh, Sonic no. games is I just need to get one more ring. Oh. Snap. Get me up there, please. Yes. Okay. 
go. That's great. Get me up there, please. Thank you. I'll go over here. Go, go, I probably go, 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 go. don't want to go that way. I probably, oh, no, nope, but I probably go. do want to go that way. Great. Keep doing the thing. Win the day, do the stuff. Win the day and do the stuff. I probably could have done that without this thing. That's oh, right. okay. Okay, I see, I see, I see. I finally got to a halfway point. You probably did that ages ago. Ah, death. I really like, again, these like these new hover mechanics and stuff. Go, I go, like go, this go. level's really fun. I wish that I had it memorized. Water slide! Come on. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's try again. Go, go. Nope. Okay. Not where it. I, where do I need to go? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. No. I'm trying to charge up and not get so. getting that. Mm. I need to bounce. No, I can't bounce. Can I? Thank you. That's what I was missing. Ah! Oh, I got stuck there. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Oh, my checkpoint. Oh, so now I'm like way behind you. Aren't no, no way. No, because I just died. So it took me back to that checkpoint. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. So so I think you're you're gonna you got okay, a good shot of pulling go. this off. Let's see. Yeah, but we're, ooh, now I'm oh, just getting to the water okay. slide though. Your checkpoint was probably after that. Oh, crud. Hey, yo. No. I nope, not this right. way. All right, hold on. Well, yes. yeah, but I was trying to, yeah, because that ooh. missed it again. I, I just got a thing go. and I don't know what it was and I wanted to go down the slide and then I missed. Wait, I'm going backwards. I'm super going backwards. <laughs> oh, ah. no, no rings. That's real frustrating. I need a ring. Wait, do I have to go backwards? Are That's like the only way no. to go. No, 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 no. I love this floating thing I know thing, I though. was in that part though. 16 bit graphics are fun. There's one ring right there. This game's really hard when you don't know the levels. No, I need that. Okay, hold on. I'm telling you that. that I, I, I think okay. I, I think That's I'm a... straight up going backwards. I don't know where to go. Because the game obviously Stop. wants me to go this way, but I can't go any further there. And I can't get through that. Okay, there's a water slide. I'm, I'm super gonna die. I haven't gotten any rings. Um. What yeah. the hell do I oh. do here? Oh, yes, there's you. I got stuck here. This is where yes. I got stuck. Okay. So what do we do? Let's, okay, competitive has just become co-op. Because <laughs> look, if we go this way, you have no choice but to go this way, which takes you back to that. Spin into oh, the thing okay. to the right. Let's we, got, we got the heads up that maybe we can smash stuff. There we go. And then the good. Ah. All the hardcore Oof. Sonic folks in the audience are just like, oh Face my god, Face palming, smashing their, their... No! Oh, there's the spring. Okay, good. Although I do have to say that because this no. game is still no. a week out... No! It's somewhat moderately acceptable that we don't know the level. <laughs> All right. All right, so I need to time that. Mm, that was nice. Uh, oh, except for that. That was not nice. Get out of my face. All right. Get out of my face, bad guys. Oh, I and I tried to spin. All right. Come here, I feel like we've got to be running out of time soon, too, right? Uh, I don't. I think the running out of time only happens when your partner finishes. Oh, uh, okay. I could be wrong. Oh, come climb, on. Climb. Climb. Go there. Nope. Go there. What? What are you doing? Go there. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Going this I way. I like these. Hey. Get the. Yes. Moving on through. <laughs> I got another checkpoint. I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> ah! ah! Dang it. I think I ended up. No, I didn't. By all luck see. and zero skill, folks. I uh, you, you 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 pulled out the victory though. You came in clutch. You made the play. <laughs> you got it. You're close to the end. Ah. 
That was tough. Yeah. I love it. I feel like, and for me, the fun of Sonic levels was when I had memorized the level. And yeah, you and then because you, you're, you're you zip through flying it, find through all that everything. Stuff super fast. Totally. All right, so I want to go right. back and just kind of show everybody the uh, the visual filters that you yeah, can we, mess with on this. Because we were having a good laugh about this too. Like our TVs are way too nice for 16-bit graphics. So, so if we you can go down to uh, we can, options. We can, we can fix that for you. Check this out. So you can have CRT, <laughs> I love it. sharp or soft, if you're really feeling that you need that. And I just, I appreciate that so, so much. So uh, New Egg Ninja Leo was saying like, yeah, I was trying to play with the CRT mode and the TV is way too big in here. This is the giant Samsung TV that we talked about a couple weeks ago. And uh, that it was making him sick. It was making him seasick, sitting way too close to the TV. Yeah. So it was like that classic, you're sitting too close to the TV. You know, like from when you were a kid. I love Only it. Only now it's kind of true because the TV's huge. Start Encore Mode? Cool. I was like, do we have time? Yes? I haven't seen Encore Mode at all. So. Yeah, I, I don't even, I don't know what Encore Mode is. Oh, is this is just full screen co-op. No, I think that's regular Sonic Mania, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So it's all you won, right? Or no, it's me. Do it. I am Sonic. Get some rings. Let's just go. There we go. Boom. Oh, it's so weird to play as Sonic after playing as Mighty. So does it? Does Sonic feel different? Because I've yes. only been playing on on Ray. Yes, Sonic does feel different, and I'm like. Oh, spikes, no problem. I can just smash down on nope. <laughs> so I couldn't, I still couldn't get a feel for Ray's gliding. I'm gonna have to play with that more. Where you at? Where you at, Tails? I assume you're Tails. I don't know. Just me. a guess. I think that's a pretty good uh, testable hypothesis. Right. Doink. <laughs> Doink. Oh, here we go. I guess you could be Tails or Mighty. Sonic got through, act one. Hey friends. <laughs> or Ray or Mighty, I guess. That's what Ray's doing right there. <laughs> Who's got two thumbs and just escaped out of a pod? This, this guy. guy. All right, now we're looking. Are we about to get some story here? Oh, nope. Oh, do you want to be Mighty or Ray? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I I, or do I want to be Mighty or Ray? I guess it's asking. What? Oh no! Boss battle! <laughs> the, the game's looking at us like... Okay, is that you or is, am I just following me? I think you're just following you. Weird. Yeah. So how do I get you? Oh, I don't think there's any color. Oh, So okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna drink some coffee and watch you do this. So uh, yeah, mm. anyone anyone else in the New Egg team who has played the Encore mode a little bit that can give us some insight on that, that'd be <sighs> super cool. Oh, you can press triangle to switch between the two. Okay. Okay, what's up? Ooh. I think I, oh, wow. Ish just got real. Yeah, it sure did. So this is one of those things. It's making really making me really happy about game design because we been mentioning before. Like I played through uh, the Crash Bandicoot. Um, excuse me, the Crash Bandicoot re-release -re on the PlayStation. These, these retro gaming experiences coming back, because uh, I was talking to my brother about this. He's got an OG Nintendo, and it's getting harder and harder for him to keep that box running. Yeah, of course. Plunging it, plugging it into new TVs is becoming a challenge. Like, oh, interesting. Like, uh, you know. Yeah. Because we're even moving away. I think hit one of his current TVs, I might be mistaken here, he might even just be running a computer monitor, not a proper TV. Okay. So it's getting even trickier figuring all that stuff out. Okay, perfect. So, uh, Encore Mode, new, <laughs> different, Sonic Mania Plus. That's it. Um, and I know that we're getting the heads up that we should probably be moving on. So, as I, as I you, die... Why don't you keep playing? I'll, I'll, I'll take a... I'll get, take go over, for it, so. Juan. So, uh, yeah, because we've been told that this is going on. Before we sign off, uh, let's take a quick look at a few more limited time deals from that New Egg Now Deals page including several from Cooler Master. First, the Master Keys Pro M keyboard with Cherry MX Brown switches is $40, $45 off the normal price with a mail-in rebate. 
Or if MX, MX Blues are more your style, you can get the MK750 also from Cooler Master for $50 off after mail-in rebate. Two different mechanical keyboards with Cherry MX switches, full per key, RGB lighting, both under $100 today, only with the promo code you'll find on the Newegg Now page. And of course, Cooler Master is best known for, you know, cooling stuff. And you can get a Master Liquid Light ML120L RGB all-in-one CPU cooler for $25 off. Welcome back. Thank uh, you. Again, with the mail-in rebate, we're seeing some very hot days now in the middle of summer. Uh, last weekend, it was 117 degrees in the valley. Oh, yeah. That was pretty toasty. So you'll want to make sure you're keeping your PC case running nice and cool. Oh, yes. And on that note, if you want something a bit more heavy-duty for your cooling, then there's also special pricing on the Orcus 240 from Regentech, a liquid CPU cooler with RGB fans, and a tank that you can get for $27 off as part of Newegg Now today. And there's so much more. A trio of great deals from Anide. Anides? I don't think I have the pronunciation on that right. And Anides. Anides. There we go. Including two different tempered glass cases and a three pack, what she said, and a three, <laughs> a three pack of RGB case fans. There's also a micro ATX case from uh, NZXT, the H400i, and both headphones and desktop speakers from Klipsch. And of course, don't forget the deals that we talked about earlier in the show including RAM from Corsair and G-Skill and a couple of NVIDIA graphics cards, or get the total package with the Newegg PC Build Kit and get double the normal amount for your Newegg <laughs> gift cards. It's yeah. all on Newegg.com slash Newegg now. So remember, all the deals on that deals page mm -hmm. will be live through the end of the day today or while supplies last. Thanks to everybody out there watching. Make sure you tune in next week when we're going to be taking a look at the overlap between DIY PC building and the world of custom car mods. I think that's going to be a lot of it's fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. And as always, a major thank you here from Trisha and I, the yes. Newegg Now team, keeping us live streaming. Thank you, keeping team. Us producing an awesome looking show. We have a blast doing this every week. We couldn't do it without you. We're going to get back to playing some Sonic because I really have to, to, to make up. I want to figure out I'm in a boss Ray. battle if you want to take it on. Oh, no, no, no. I would never interrupt someone's boss battle, but this has been Newegg <laughs> Now, and now you know. Bye, guys. We'll catch you next week. Bye,